Right, so the next thing we want to do, if we add another layer in here, and we want to start thinking now about the kind of variance in colour around the wood. So we're going to have kind of lighter edges all around here, and kind of some lighter areas in here, but also some kind of darker bits too. So maybe we'll start off with, say, a colour like that, and increase the size of our brush a little bit here, and just start painting in here like this, just to get that variance in colour. So in the areas where it gets a bit um, a bit thicker, we'll add some more brightness to those bits compared to the thinner bits as well. And don't worry if it, if you think it's getting a bit kind of too bright, because we can always dim that a little bit too. And don't worry if it looks a little bit messy as well because we could just paint over any bits that aren't working so well. So remember not to miss off the edge bits such as this. Okay, that's not looking too bad. So maybe now we'll also pick, add another new layer. Um, and actually, I might just decrease the opacity of this one down a touch. I then add another new layer as well, and we'll look at this time adding in some some kind of darker areas too. So again, keeping like a quite a nice big brush, we'll go over some of these areas that we've already painted and add in some darker bits too. So at the moment we've mainly focused on the um, on the highlights. And notice how I'm trying to keep all these darker areas to the left of the highlight as well. Then we'll pick the colour that's just above that one. Then we can use that one to soften off the fall off between the highlight and this darker area that we've now added. And again, maybe we'll just lower the opacity of that a touch. And what I might do now as well, actually, is just pick the brightest colour that we're going to use here. Add another new layer. And go over some of these lines that we drew earlier. Just to add some really kind of bright bits of highlight around, around here. Again, it's a slightly different paint style for painting these lines compared to how we were just doing those big highlights. Rather than kind of scratchy things like that, using a far more just 
holding it down and applying pen pressure as we follow the line. I don't cover all the lines in this, just some bits where it's quite, where it's maybe where it's thicker than others, like there. And what I might do is actually just blur this slightly. So with that layer selected, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can see what that's doing. And you can turn off this preview to see exactly what it's what it's doing. I think that's probably about right. Okay, so we're getting there now with this. I'll tell you one of the only things we have left to do. Um, first of all, add another new layer. And this time we're going to pick our, we'll go for the kind of brightest colour that we've got on here. And increase the size of our brush a bit. And what we're going to do is kind of create the highlight going around the the edge here. So obviously we can use our UVs to do this. So if you just apply less pressure as you paint along And then actually you can colour pick on there. Apply less pressure and so on until the gradient runs down. So we're going to kind of curve off this, this edge a bit as well. We want it to be quite obvious. Now the one reason why I'm painting this like quite making it quite an obvious like highlight, which probably wouldn't be so kind of realistic on, on wood, is because um this is gonna be in like a handheld game, so we want to make sure that these highlights are pretty obvious. So one thing we'll also want to do is use the we could probably get away with using the eraser tool here just to bring those lines back in so we maybe if we turn the opacity down on this we can help bring those details back in here just like paint out here maybe use a slightly bigger brush just because we don't want to lose those details that we painted. So also you can see the way the strokes are moving along. Really I want the strokes to move vertically down so 
let's just start to do that now. So colour pick on here and move this down. Just so that we start to get a nice gradient. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. I don't want to do too much on that because it's quite repetitive. But now we can just apply the same kind of technique to the bottom as well. In fact, what you can just try actually is just duplicating this bit of a hack and flip that vertical. And that's because it got the image rotated. So we'll try flip horizontal, line that up there. And then you can you know, use those existing colours to paint that back in. So obviously we need to go back to our razor tool again and erase out any bits where it's going over our detail lines. back in. There's still a few bits here that could erase out. And now if we go back in and just start painting in those gradient lines again. So you might think, you know, sometimes if this was something that was uh, always on one angle, something like a shield or something like that, you might paint from light to dark. But since we're going for a kind of top-down light rig on this, painting it um, with all these kind of highlights around it will work pretty well. So it's kind of like it's almost like it's evenly lit from from all angles. Getting used to using the shortcuts is essential for this as well. So using B to bring up the brush tool, using E to bring up the eraser, and using W to go to select mode. So E for eraser, B, and V is move, so you can move stuff around. Um, the more time you spend on this, as with anything, the better it will become as well. So I might just add another brightness colour here. Just to add one more kind of level of colour. Um, and obviously you can test this as well by turning off your UVs and having a look at how that's looking. Um, so let's just try saving this out then. So we'll save this. Save it on the root here. Let's call it wood, for example. And if we just jump back into Maya. Select the wood here and we'll assign 
right click on it, assign new material and we'll pick a uh, Lambert and in our colour slot we'll drop that PSD so file from the list here that's on the other side and there we go, we can see how that wood is looking on our model. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for painting wood. Obviously we can just follow the same techniques for the ends and the sides. Um, obviously you can blag this a little bit now by you know, just mirroring this around and cloning it over. I'll show you what I mean by that. Might as well. Um, so we'll just make a new group We'll call this wood main. Actually, to be honest, if you come to here and go panel options large, I prefer working with the larger panels and actually a bigger layer manager as well. So we'll drop all that into there. Obviously, except for this, so we'll just. Duplicate group, and we can chuck that over to there, and use transform horizontal, transform vertical, and just stick that into place there. And you could paint this out and tweak that slightly, but it's a nice, easy way to kind of hack this kind of thing. Um, also, another good way to get variety, real quick. I'll just save this and just quickly preview that because obviously one thing to bear in mind here is where you're going to see the plank from from both sides uh, so you'll see one side at a time so it can kind of work um, another useful thing to do if we just drop in a hue saturation here desaturate the wood I tend to find, uh, I always tend to pick colours that are a bit too bright to start with when you desaturate it you get a kind of more realistic result but also you can get variance from this way so you can save one version like that you know, change the hue and stuff on it add a colour balance like so and then you've got two different variations of your wood so just different colours so let's just save that out now and so that's it, some ways to kind of paint, completely paint wood from scratch.